A Ferris wheel is caught, or a Ferris wheel is 50 meters in diameter and boarded, and boarded from a platform that is one meter above the ground. The six, at the six o'clock position on the, the six o'clock position on the Ferris wheel is level with the loading platform and the wheel completes one full rotation in 10 minutes. The function H equals F of T gives the height in meters above ground in T minutes after the wheel has been begun to turn. So, <clears throat> the easiest way to handle this, there's a, there's a few different ways to handle this problem. Um, you could try to draw a drawing and kind of um, draw an equation. Um, based on the rec on the Ferris wheel itself or you could kind you could try to just think about where the, the, the um where the person will be where the height will be at a, any given certain time and that is a lot faster and easier way to write this and what we'll do from there is we're going to draw a graph and from the graph we're going to write the equation so that's a little easier so what i'm saying is um you could try to just draw a picture of the situation and um, that can help you go straight to the equation and whatever it is cosine whatever it is um you know Um, that's hard to just draw the situation and look at the algebra and the and the and the um We'd have to set up all this distance here is equal to that distance. Or it would just be a lot of setting it up to figure out the equation straight from the wheel itself. Or what we could do is we could just listen to the story and kind of just plot where it would be, where the um, at certain times of the height. And then from this graph that we plot, then we can write the equation. So I feel like the second way of doing it um, is much easier. So that's my goal. I wanna draw a picture just based on um, this information. I wanna draw a picture of the graph. That's, that's my goal. And then from the graph, I can get this equation that I want, okay? So, but there's both two different ways to talk this problem and both of them are, you know, could be, um, are good ways you know to, to solve it so um, the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to notice i'm going to draw the picture just so that i can figure out a person's height at any given time as measured from the ground okay a ferris wheel is 50 feet 50 meters in diameter so this direction is 50 meters and then and okay and boarded from a platform that is one meter off the ground. So that's one meter. Okay, and then um, at the six, the six o'clock position is the level with the with the loading platform. So that is, you know, this is like a clock one or 12 o'clock, one, two, three, four, five, and six would be down at the bottom. Okay, perfect. Okay. <clears throat> the wheel completes one full um, revolution in 10 minutes. So if it's one full revolution in 10 minutes, that means halfway through, which means from the bottom to the top, it would be at five minutes, right? And then um, over here, it would be at 7.25, I believe. So you're, it's completing um, 2.25 minutes um, in, um, in 2.25 minutes, right? No, 2.5, 2.5 minutes, it's going a quarter of the way around. So that's just giving us an idea, you know, of where the time, what time it is, and also what heights you're going to be at at each given um, time. So, <clears throat> 
Now I'm going to try to draw the graph. At time zero, that they're getting on the platform, so they're at the bottom in the 6 to the p.m. position, they're going to be one meter off the ground. So I'm going to go to one on the x-axis. And then so at start, or that's zero on the x-axis, they're at one. OK, and then at um, I'm just going to go jump to a quarter of the way through this rotation. They're going to be at a height of 26, right? Because half of 50 is going to be 25. Then plus the one, because this wheel is one foot off the ground, it's going to be at 26. So I'm going to go up. This is not drawn by scale in any means. But let's just say this is 26. So <clears throat> at 2.25, the 2.5 minutes, it's going to be at 26. Okay, and then um, let me see if I can make some more room in here. I think I can. Hold on. There. All right, that might be better. Okay, notice now that at five minutes, um, which is halfway around this rotation, um, it's going to be at its max height. It's going to be 50, which is the diameter of the, the wheel, plus one, so 51. So at five minutes, it's going to be 51. So that is, um, let's just say, say that's, we should be about equal, right? Um, let's just say it's right there. And then, you know, at um, <clears throat> 7.5 minutes, which is three fourths the way around, it's going to be back at 26, right? Because it's 25 plus one more meter off the ground. And then at, when you go all the way around, so you go all the way around the circle, you're back at the bottom in 10 in the 10 minute frame. So it's gonna be back down here at one foot off the ground at the bottom. So that is our graph. Now I could just, um, <clears throat> if you notice, um, whenever we graph something, we want the those four key points, a fourth of the way, halfway, three fourths, and the ending and the start place, and we've done that. We've drawn those four key points, and now all I have to do is notice that this is a curve. This is a sinusoidal curve, so yeah, I just draw like a curvy line through all um, of the points, and there is my graph. Now, from just looking at the graph, because I'm already used to really looking at graphs and figuring out what the, the, the form, what the equation that belongs to the graph is, so this part is easier. So f of t, because this is going to equal, <clears throat> and it's because this is starting at, um, I, I noticed here's here's the min, here's the max, right here. This is the max point. This is the min point. And so is this one, this is the min point. I have to have memorized the basic cosine. So basic cosine starts at max, goes to min, and goes back to max. It looks like a big hill. And this graph looks exactly like the flip of that, right? Real cosine would have looked like this. And this graph looks exactly like that, but flipped upside down, right? So <clears throat> I know it's negative cosine. <clears throat> so I'm going to write, I know it's negative and the amplitude, because here is my line that if I cut this graph in half, going from the min to the max, if I cut that, if I go halfway in between the min and max, it's the midline of this equation and it cuts 
the, the graph in half horizontally. And that's happening at 26. So this graph has been pushed up 26. So our K here, K value is 26. Because that's where this is the actual zero used to happen and used to be. And it looks like the amplitude, which is the distance from your um, max value down to the um, midline, that looks like it is 25. <clears throat> it would be 51 minus 26, which equals 25. So you have a negative 25 amplitude cosine function. Um, now, now it looks, did, what it is, now I have to calculate the B. Well, the period is equal to two pi over B because this is cosine or sine. So two pi, the, well, now I know what the period is. I know from min back to min, it was, it took 10 minutes. So that's the period, that means the period is, um, <clears throat> 10. Now, <clears throat> just so that you know, just a reminder, right? If if we see many, if we if our if our graph looks like this, we can always measure the period from one max over to the next max, like that distance right there is the period, or you could have done any min value to the next min value. That distance is going to be the same. And you could use that, you know, on either cosine or sine, or, you know, if you are very familiar with the start place and the end place, and it's very, it's really on your, it's on your picture, you know, you could start, you know, by looking at, by remembering a basic shape, it's a, a hill and valley, and you know that it starts at right before that hill and ends right after that valley. And so you could have measured the, the period like that if you have a complete hill and valley in your picture, right? Or <clears throat> so either one, there's three ways you could measure the period. And I'm telling, giving you all three because all pictures are different. And sometimes they don't have a hill and valley. Sometimes you only have, you know, a hill like we do in this case. So it's good to know that you can always measure it between its min values, two min values. That's how you can find the, 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 um, the period, or you can measure between the two max values. Or even if you don't have a min and max, <clears throat> or you don't have two min values, right? <clears throat> you also could look and say, well, uh, you know, if I just had this part, of the sine function, I just had the, um, <clears throat> well, this would be hard because I wouldn't, you could either go with sine or cosine here. <clears throat> if I just had this part and I didn't have the minimum part, like, then, um, and I knew that the graph was gonna go down further to a minimum value, um, <clears throat> I could say that this is half of the period and just double this distance and <clears throat> to get to, to a full period. But it's much more reliable to figure out the min value and, and, and cal calculate it between two min values or between two max values, like I said. All right. So anyways, we figured out that, this, that, that the period was 10. So you could either remember this formula, period is equal to two pi over b, and then you can plug in um, 10 for the, for the p. And then solve this equation for b. You could do it that way. I would multiply both sides by b. And then divide by 10 on both sides.
and b equals two pi over 10, which is pi over five. So my period here is pi over five b, and the x, t, I'm t, t, because um, they want t to be the time. And there's my equation. <clears throat> Let me know. And so the amplitude would be not negative 25, it's positive 25. The amplitude is always the, the is measured as a distance from the midline to that max. So um, <clears throat> it's always the absolute value of the coefficient. And then um, B is this pi over five term. And then K, the vertical shift is the 26 and the period is 10. So um, hopefully um, you found this valuable. Oh, and they do ask you how high are you off the ground in five minutes? And I kind of already like showed you guys that that um, that in five, because it was full rotation in 10 minutes, we were halfway through the rotation, which means we were at the very top of this of this um, Ferris wheel at five minutes, which means the very top was the full diameter 50 plus the, the um, this um, the platform. Um, height, which was one meter. So 51 meters would be the, your um, height at, at five minutes. And you could have figured that out by plugging five into uh, in for t and simplifying the expression. All right, have a great day. Bye-bye.